It's a season opening winged game special. No! <laughs> we start with the Swedish Goose Busters. Roy, Jack in a Box, Lupton is shooting grey lags and Canada's. When I'm doing that, can you just sit behind me and give me a push up, yeah? Oh yeah, I can do that. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm out with my father, protecting the crops, shooting butterflies. What a show! News, hunting, YouTube, welcome to Field Sports Britain. Think Sweden, think moose. Think Sweden, think goose. Roy has been invited by Aimpoint, manufacturers of the famous well, red dot really sight, to meet the you father and son quick. goose so, shooting yeah, yeah. team Ulf and Simon Gustafsson. Can you, when, I, when I'm doing that, can you just sit behind me and give me a push up? Yeah. Oh yeah, I can do that. Yeah. I've <laughs> <laughs> got no problem at all shooting you, you can like The one thing I'm really worried about with this trip is actually managing to sit up in one of the hides and shoot. So I think we need to practice that before we do anything else. I think otherwise, um, I am definitely going to have to dab David behind me with his size 10 just to give me a boot up the backside. Actually, 19-year-old Simon is the boss. Ulf is the hired help. But together, they are the Goose Busters. For the last five years, they have been trying to make a dent in the meteoric population growth of Greylag and Canada's along the west coast of Sweden. The geese numbers in Sweden have increased like this, just racing straight up. Probably as long as I live, we won't be able to uh, decrease the population here in Sweden. Their approach is refreshingly holistic. They have built a community of farmers, landowners and hunting groups to try and deliver effective pest control over a vast area. Uh, that is one of my main uh, issues uh, with these things, to, to get hunters together, uh, uh, cooperating, having fun together, instead of just uh, watching your uh, fields uh, and never let anyone else in. We have a, a, a slight problem Roy here. looks nervous. There is something getting in the way. In the way, yeah, yeah. yeah so it won't go. Yeah, it's, it's not too low. <laughs> <laughs> he needn't have worried. With a target out in front, his prey drive kicks in and he's out of the blind like a goose fat smothered ninja. No! <laughs> yeah, dead bird. That works. Dead bird. <laughs> I landed! Oh. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> 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 yeah. we Joining us for our goose hunting is Alex Nordin from Aimpoint and French filmmaker and fellow YouTuber Philippe from the Philou Hunting Channel. He, like Roy, has been through the Aimpoint Academy, so has learnt all about the different red dot products. For the shotgun shooting, we're using the Micro S1. It's a little bit of kit that has seen Ulf and Simon's shooting success rate go up by 20%. When you are shooting, yeah, sitting shooting, that you get the um, stubble on your, um, on, on your shotgun, it's difficult to see, it's difficult to aim, but with the red dot, you get a really, really good chance to hit the bird anyway. You always hit where the red dot is. So if you have the red dots on the goose, you will hit it, and you will kill it. Winchester semi-autos are the guns of choice for these guys. Probably more important than the gun is the shell you put through it. Simon is a nerd on ammo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with being a nerd. But. Uh, um, 
We have been trying a lot of different ammunition types. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these ones, uh, the Winchester Zeta Zeta Pigeon, is the one we have got stuck for because it's a high velocity, uh, around 420 meters a second. Okay. And uh, it's a 4, 36 grams. Uh, so. Um, is that is that lead free or is that? Uh, this is lead. It is lead. Okay. Um, there are lots of punching power in the geese, so you get to, like, you get them where you shoot them. Okay, but over, over in Sweden, you don't have any restrictions on using yeah, lead. Yeah, we free. have. You have. We can't shoot uh, where they are, where, they are, where the water is uh, uh, less than uh, two, two meters. Two meters. Like. Okay. So, yeah. so yeah, yeah. then we need. But when we are like this, uh, away yeah. from the sea or lakes, so we can use lead. Okay. If we're shooting um, waterfowl, then we have to use lead-free. So we have to use uh, you know, bismuth or steel or, or yeah, tungsten or whatever else. But you were just saying there that you, if you are shooting on the foreshores or if you're shooting by the sea, then you use a, a faster cartridge on the on the steel. Yeah, in the steel, the most important thing is the speed. Yeah, because yeah. the speed will kill the bird better. So as fast as you can get mm -hmm. is my. Uh, and what I mean, what, what, what were you saying? Meters per second on your steel shots uh, out here? On my steel shots, we have around uh, 550 meters a second. Okay. So it's a very fast cartridge. Yeah. That's it. So then you're, you're getting the hydrostatic shock when you're, you're hitting the birds as well. Exactly. Super. And you were saying for crow hunting as well, that works really well. Yeah, it is. We have been shooting a lot of crows. You get them really. It's time close. to check okay. out where we are likely to be hunting that, uh, in the morning. <laughs> Passionate, uh, the guys are nuts, absolutely nuts. Reconnaissance is a big part of Simon and Ulf's success. They have eyes everywhere thanks to an expanding number of trusted in the field operatives. Even though this field looks busy, another better field lies two hours north, so we need to pack up everything we'll need for the morning, including decoys. We have been testing a lot of different decoys, and this is the one that have the Best. <laughs> oh, no. Whoa, and then. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Good shit. <laughs> Crazy Vikings. The long drive is worth it. The birds are arriving in numbers. This evening they'll head back to the coastal waters two kilometres from here. We hope they will return to feed in the morning. We want to be right where they are now. So to be in with a chance of a shot, we need to go native with our blinds. So it's important that we have the same colours as the, the field in general. And uh, as well we take from this field uh, what we can collect and we will as well put together in plastic sacks as much as we can get to just straw around the blinds tomorrow morning. You see the difference here, yellow and white. Every time we hunt uh, we do this job, except um, when we have uh, the possibilities to uh, dress like swans. <laughs> uh, the swans, we love the swans because we, when they enter the fields uh, fly up from the sea and from the lakes. We just dress like them and we, um, we save ourselves a lot of time doing the camouflage. This technique is from Astasia and the guys that taught us, uh, the DK Way brothers from Denmark, they are, were raised in, the, in the, the States uh, doing a lot of waterfowl. So uh, they brought this to uh, Europe, improved the equipment improve the decoys, which is really important. A huge amount of work goes into delivering a successful day. When Ulf and Simon take clients, they guarantee 50 birds. Any less, and they reimburse some of the fee, and they don't do that often. OK, now David was being very rude about my hide covering capabilities, and he was saying I was, uh, it looked like I was stuffing Wurzel Gummidge's suit. But I think that is, look, I mean, that is looking absolutely superb, as far as I'm concerned. I think that'll hide me. So if it'll hide me, it's got to be good. What do you reckon? I mean, come on. Let's have let's have the official the official look or the official judging on my height. Professional view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you've done this before. Yeah, thank looks you. Re looks really professional. Thank you. Perhaps you were born in such a thing. <laughs> More than likely. <laughs> that's it. You are almost Danish. With the blinds rethatched, we leave them on the field edge so they too get wet from the dew. 
After a few short hours, we're back and building a pattern around our colour-coordinated blinds. We just got on the field and it's just like a military operation. The guys are, are just flat out getting everything set up. Luckily, just behind where we've got the blinds, we've got a little bit of long stubble that's been left right in the middle here, which is absolutely perfect because it'll just give it a little bit more camouflage to the blinds that we were setting up. And literally, these guys are just out, decoys out. They want to put um, a set of about 120, 130 decoys out, and then we're going to add to the pattern as we start shooting birds um, a little bit later on. So, um, yeah, I'm seriously enjoying watching it all go on. And uh, again, just watching the field craft and watching the different techniques is, is just phenomenal. And so much to learn again from you know, seeing the, the, uh, the way that different people do different things. We always try to get like a loose banana form in our decoys. Uh, with the wind in our back so the geese can land in the area just in front of us. So what have we done here? You've centralised the sort of Canada's? We centralised the Canada's because we want them to aim for us because we don't have any wind today. Right. So uh, when, w the w when they are going to land they are just going to go straight down and land in front of us. Okay. Uh, the grey lights are going to circle a bit and then we, are, we have more opportunities to shoot them better. Right. So uh, therefore we have the grey legs in the flanks and the canaries in the middle right. because uh, then we can have the opportunity to shoot them both species okay. in a better way. Not the time. Right. But the, the tax is season. <laughs> now all that's left is to wait. <laughs> It doesn't matter where you are in the world, whenever you're out first light and uh, just seeing everything come to life and uh, the dawn coming through it is just absolutely stunning. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, Sweden's a, a particularly beautiful country anyway, but uh, yeah, just being out on the stubble field and uh, seeing it all go on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when two o'clock arrived this morning, I was um, not looking forward to it, but yeah, again, it's, it's the same as all hunting. Once you get out there and, uh, and see it all emerging and see everything starting, and the, uh, the excitement starts to build. It's just absolutely fabulous. Our first arrivals are barnacle geese. They are protected, but their interest is encouraging. The three lowest is it grey, grey leg. <laughs> Good field craft gets you close to wildlife, and these guys want to be close. They want to hit the numbers hard, but it is tough when it comes to the smarter grey lags. They hope all the preparation pays off and the five guns shoot well. Good shooting! Yeah. More coming! That is a lot of fun. <laughs> Excellent. I think we've got a few on that one. The pattern and blinds have worked to a point. For the last half an hour, we moved as the birds were landing to the left. Plus, the aerial shot shows that even with the lighter straw from the same field woven into the blinds, we are still too dark and grey lags know something is wrong. Well, no, that was a beautiful morning, wasn't it? I mean, I, yeah, the conditions were not good for us, though, were they? We had no wind. No. It was zero or one uh, metre per second. Yeah, yeah. Which meant that they didn't want to land right in front of us. Yeah. Uh, Everything was going over to, the, uh, to our left-hand side, so, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, they were yeah. just going across, going yeah. across. And you, and you feel now the small wind we have. Yeah, it's, it's coming, just from, coming from that left yeah. side. So yeah. they, they went towards the wind. Yeah, as they normally oh, exactly. Do. Yeah, yeah. And um, in the end of the hunt, we uh, changed the blinds, moved the blinds. Yeah, but that's it. Just a little yeah, bit too late. late. But I mean, still a phenomenal morning. I mean, what yeah. have we got there? 50, 51 was it, or fifty-two? Uh, fifty-one. Fifty-one. Okay, no, brilliant. It's a really, really good hunt. Yeah, yeah. No, that was and, superb. Um, and, be and beautiful to watch them coming in through the valleys. I mean, you could see them miles away, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And just see the skeins coming in, and obviously the calling just uh, focus them in on the uh, on the pattern and away we went. But yeah, no, I mean, just stunning. But no, that was that was really lovely. Thank you for that this morning. That was really good. Yeah, yeah. No, Thanks gorgeous. for uh, joining us. No, no. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get a bit of wind and away we go. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. With all the geese, decoys, shells and blinds collected, there is some breasting to be done. <laughs> These Canadians we leave for smoking. We're always told that Canada's taste like, um, taste like a brick. So, yep. is that true? No, it's not true. Not if you do it the right way. Uh, uh, actually, you can, uh, you, you can even eat the meat without uh, smoke it if you do it the correct way. We usually put it into um, yogurt with special bacteria for a couple of days in the uh, fridge. It tenders the meat and um, then you uh, cook it via a s uh, slow cooker or crock pot or something. Uh, most Canadians we smoke or we do hamburgers or sausages together with uh, our other wild uh, game. Uh, it's, it's a waste uh, just to throw it away and I think we, we have to respect nature as well. It's, it's one, one part of the hunting has been since we went down from the trees. To celebrate a successful morning, we have goose burgers on the barbecue. As they cook, we have a chance to chat with the Frenchman who shot his first grey lag this morning. I'm no use to have uh, uh, so many guns together, and uh, uh, we don't see, I, I won't say we don't see anything, but uh, close to. We, we, are, we are in the, in the blind, waiting, waiting, and so it's, then there is the shout. There is a, the scream. Ah! Okay, open. You, you, you're just looking after the, the geese, and you. Everybody is uh, firing in the, in the same time. You are not uh, really sure at every time that uh, it is yours. So, uh, so I've seen uh, many times that uh, the bird was falling. I was just putting the trigger, so I was late. <laughs> we're, we're here to, to, to look at the practical uses of, of the S1. How have you found it? Yeah, it's pretty uh, amazing. Um, I first saw that um, it will be complicated because I uh, shot so many uh, rounds uh, without anything on my uh, my shotgun. But for the for when the the birds are coming and you are standing waiting, I think it, it's very good way to improve your your result. Uh, it's, it's, it was very good experiment. Um, it's a lot of work to uh, to do it properly. There are gifted i think uh, because uh, they, they know it very well so they are very good guides and um, it's a very good way to 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 understand this way of hunting and to uh, taste it <laughs> full of goose burger it's time to hit the road for more recon this time we head south once again communication is key this is definitely where we will be in the morning and the hope is our blinds will match the stubble come 4am. Unfortunately that's not the case. It's all change. When we got on the field we realised that the, the camouflage that we had on the hides was completely unsuitable because um, we've got just a little bit of stubble on here and, and then there's a lot of bare earth so we just had to take off um, all the camouflage that we put on the, the hides a couple of days ago just to try and get them to blend in a little bit more. So it's just a military operation, everybody just pitches in. And I think that's something about this hunt as well, because you've got a team of five or six guys doing it. It is just a, um, a very social occasion. So you know, you're, all, you're all there for the common goal. And it's, it's lovely to see everybody actually. Um, so you know, everybody just pitches in. We've got the hinds cleaned off. We've now got all the decoys out. We'll be clearing the cars off the field in a minute. Um, and the way that light came in so quickly yesterday, yeah, it's not going to be long before We've hopefully got the, uh, the first shimmerings of geese coming through. They were saying in the afternoons here, you get um, larger flocks coming in together to feed, but in the mornings, yeah, you just get the, the, the family groups coming through. So you'll have um, skeins of uh, you know, seven, a dozen or whatever else. So it's a lot more effective from a pest control um, perspective, because then when you've got a, a, a team of guns there, then you can hit them a lot harder. And, and effectively. It's a gorgeous morning, and when the birds come, they come in numbers. But they're not dropping in front as we hoped.
we move once. Then a second time and start building a bag. The sky is absolutely filled with geese at the minute. They're just coming from everywhere. So it's, it is, um, it's been absolutely manic. So the, the, uh, the pattern didn't work straight off. Um, the, the geese were coming in and flaring and then we just had to be moving patterns, moving the, the hides, moving the patterns, moving the hides. And we've just got into a position now. We've just got a little bit of wind starting and they're just coming in. They're not overly keen to commit 100%. So we're just taking them on the flight line now as they're starting to come over the top of us. But it's, it's certainly making for some fun shooting. So um, we've got a few, well, quite a few down. I don't know where we are. I don't think we're quite as good as we were yesterday. But uh, the action's certainly hotting up. So hopefully we've got another 30, 45 minutes of it. So uh, fingers crossed. Roy and the rest of the guys are shooting well, even with the obvious restrictions of the blind and fast reaction shots which is where the guys feel the Micro S1 delivers. Awkward angles and straw-covered ribs do not impede you finding the target. In these kind of blinds where you're lying down, you will probably have a quite a hard time to get the right angle over the ribs. So with the S1, you could just focus on the target and when you get up, you will see the red dot and you're good to go. Because it is quite hard to get out of the of the blind and be quick on the, on the target. It's fast shooting. They want to stay in the sky waiting for it. And that, I think, is pretty much it. We had, I mean, just action after action after action. It was superb. Yeah, a brilliant, brilliant day. I don't know what we've ended up with, but uh, bloody good fun, wasn't it? Awesome That's day. Fun. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Once the birds stop coming, we have a bag of 80 plus and a win-win situation. Great sport, farmland protected, and a quality meat product. For more information about joining Simon and Ulf for some serious fun, go to gorsejagterinvest.se. And to find out more about the Micro S1 Red Dot site, go to aimpoint.com. I think that film shows all too well what a great time Roy and David had in Sweden. Thanks to Aimpoint for making it happen, to Philippe from Philly, a Frenchman who found the smoked Canada goose incredible, and to the Gustafsons whose passion and energy is clear. Now to someone who likes a smoke, a Canadian, a goose, and keeping abreast of what's happening, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. <laughs> This is Field Sports Channel News. The BBC has produced a pro shooting film. Called The Deer Stalker and made by BBC Scotland, it went out across the UK on BBC One on Sunday night at 6 pm. It profiles Alex MacDonald of the Acna Carry estate and includes scenes of deer being shot. Okay, they get his name wrong, but there isn't a Bill Oddie or a Chris Packham anywhere near the programme. Field Sports Channel viewers responded to an appeal to thank the BBC for this film, with 88,000 of you seeing our post on Facebook and 10,000 clicking on it. That's the kind of response that's going to get back to the BBC and may persuade them to make more films like this. A gamekeeper shot and buried two short-eared owls in Cumbria. In April 2017, RSPB officers witnessed Tim Cowan shoot two protected short-eared owls on the Wernside shoot. Local police met the RSPB at the location and intercepted Karen. They recovered the bird's carcasses and a Fox Pro calling device. This week, Karen pleaded guilty to shooting the owls and possessing the Fox Pro. He was fined a total of £1,000 and ordered to pay £170 in costs. The RSPB praised people within the shooting industry itself who are unhappy about what is taking place in our uplands and continuing to sully the reputation of the shooting industry. 
RSPB staff have accidentally killed an osprey chick. They were trying to attach a tag to the bird in a nest at the top of a tree in Aberdeenshire when it fell to the ground and died. The RSPB released a statement explaining the accident and pledging to learn from the mistake. It's been a good week in Europe for hunting rules and regulations. Denmark has legalised falconry. Romania has lightened restrictions on foreign hunters bringing firearms to the country. And French President Emmanuel Macron has agreed to cut the cost of a hunting licence from €447 Euros to €200 Euros a year, according to the head of the Fédération Nationale de Chasseur. In Sweden, animal rights activists have caused massive harm to local wildlife. Masked antis freed 5,000 mink from a fur farm and then posted the video on Facebook. Staying in Sweden and another farmer has lost sheep to recently released wolves. The farmer near Askersund lost 26 sheep in one night to wolves recently released in the area by the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency. And finally, a hotel made famous in horror movies has had an unusual late night visitor. The famed Stanley Hotel in Colorado gained notoriety when author Stephen King wrote The Shining after spending a night there and having a vivid nightmare. This week, a bear from the Rocky Mountains walked in through the door and had a look around before walking off. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, what could be more lovely than sitting in the garden and looking at butterflies? I bet you weren't expecting that. Today, my dad and I are out to find the best way to knock down butterflies. The um, best thing is to get coarse, dry sand, which spreads and at close range is very effective. But this wet earth sticks together and you're effectively firing a ball shot. My family has a proud heritage of flicking flies with rubber bands and I have inherited a love of this sport. With the plums and the apples out come insects. You have to stalk them. You have to be an accurate shot. And training the retrievers is really tough. Like any hunting, there is quarry great and small. And the greatest quarry in Britain is the cabbage white. So the quarry list is uh, uh, two species. The large or cabbage white, uh, which is this one, not that one that's found only in the Canary Islands. But there it is. The males have got no spots on the upper surface. The females have got large spots and they're the ones you should shoot first. And then you've got the small whites, uh, which the one you've got here is the uh, rapi, the, from rape, uh, meaning the, ca the cabbage family. Uh, the one you mustn't mix it with, well you won't mix it with, is the black veined white, which is, became extinct in Britain in 1925. Uh, but then the various ones, the green veined white you can see here is a rare one, but it's bad luck if it gets in the way, don't worry. But if it's got conspicuous green on the underside, leave it alone. Yeah, and what about the brimstone? Yes, the females are whitish. And they've got a very different shape of wing, haven't yes. they? Yes, you see these pointed wing tips, skip it. Right. And it is most important not to endanger any more the, the other butterflies. Uh, but uh, do shoot all the small whites and the cabbage whites you can because they are distasteful to birds because the caterpillars eat mustard gas derivative from the mustard or cabbage plants and incorporate it in their tissues and birds won't use them. Oh, I That's see. Why, one of the reasons why they are so common. So we have a plague of cabbage whites, but we're, we're, we're low on the other butterflies. Yes, exactly. Amazing. The cabbage white butterfly has hardly any higher order natural predators. It's up to us to keep the numbers down. So here's our arsenal. A 2-2 rimfire with scope off and dust shot cartridges. A 2-2 air rifle, also with no scope. A catapult with a bowl of sand. And of course, a ball of elastic bands. It's my dad's cabbages, you see, ravaged by this fellow, the cabbage white caterpillar. By the end of August, they have done their dirty work and left behind this stuff, frass, which is a smart word for insect poo. 
the good news is that they have grown wings and are a sporting prospect. Just uh, on the on the um, calibre, we're using two two. Um, I mean, effectively dust shot, aren't we? As you, yeah. you can see from there. Um, there was the, the alternative is nine millimeter, um, the garden gun shot yes. cartridge, isn't it? Uh, that, that's much more destructive. I've used both on small animals. Uh, the, I used the, the 2 2 dust shot uh, very successfully in Nigeria in 1962 to collect reptiles for the British Museum, and very little damage was done. Uh, and dust shot with a 12 bore was used by Albert Meek in the end of the last of the uh, 19th century when he was collector for Walter Rothschild and uh, he actually collected the largest butterfly ever recorded uh, with a shotgun. And you'll see the type specimen, the original is peppered with holes. <laughs> we do a lot of testing. Our simulated cabbage white is, ironically, a leaf. Here's what happens when you shoot it with a 2-2 rimfire with dust shot. Even more ironically, here's the result on a cabbage leaf. I suppose in terms of spread, that's about the size of a butterfly absolutely incapacitated yes i don't think it's much use shooting them flying because uh, the spread of pattern is uh, would be too great It'd be very yes. satisfactory though wouldn't it oh yes yes we'll try <laughs> we'll try it turns out it's not only fun it's exhausting the difficulty is keeping up with your quarry keeping the rifle safe and trying to position yourself so you have a safe backstop not be a cure for father's Parkinson's but it's certainly a distraction. <laughs> we find that the tutu rimfire works at least three feet away. A good technique for close range work is sand wrapped in loo paper and shot from a tutu air gun. Cut squares of loo paper, twist sand into it, trim off excess paper and twist it into the breech. It's probably going to be bad for your barrels and worse for the seal at the end of the barrels but the result is still satisfactory. And here's the result for us. A successful day. Yes. <laughs> Bag of four, anyhow, various runners. You, you said that it's important to get the females. Why, why is that? Because they lay the eggs. The, the males usually only mate once. But right. If they can mate more than once, then you, if they've mate four times, you've got to kill four males to every female. And, and how many eggs do these lay? About 200. So actually, I mean, in terms of you know, people who say that it's a lot of cost for a 2 2 cartridge to shoot one butterfly, but. Well, you're getting rid of 200 eggs. If you think that uh, of 200 eggs, if 198 uh, are killed out of those 200, the population remains stable. If 199 are, are killed, the population halves. If 196 are killed, the population doubles. So we're making every one we shoot makes, makes some difference. It adds, adds up, yes, yes. Good. Um, Can you see this taking off as a, as a sort of significant sport to rival grouse shooting? Uh, no, no, no not, not exactly. It's not, it hasn't got quite the thrill of the, the go wet, go wet, go wet. But <laughs> uh, it's, um, it, it's a minor uh, suburban garden uh, afternoon sport. <laughs> got him. There you go. And if you missed the bumblebee ferreting my dad and I did a few years ago, you can click on the link top right on the screen to have a look at it. Now from Somerset to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Stuart Taylor sends me his latest. He's at it again with the 410 Hush Power, shooting crows and pigeons and calling the crows with his own voice, not with a caller. Mark Yaler explains technique and shoots well, pigeon shooting over wheat stubble in a short two and a half hours crammed into a five minute film. And here's a shake up for UK pigeon shooters. Bobby Guy Films in the USA is using Mojo Duck Spinner decoys to bring in doves and he says they work perfectly. Alberta Waterfowl Outfitters takes a dry field hunting on Ramsey Russell's channel for birds including mallards, pintails, Canada geese, cackle geese, snow geese and they claim more speckle belly geese than you'll find elsewhere in Canada. Back in the UK, John Bailey of Bailey's Shooting and Country Wear takes an exceptional 336 yard fox with NV UK night vision. As with all shots, don't take the shot unless you can take the shot. In this new Kriegov film, Hendrik Lott is in Benin in West Africa on a buffalo hunting adventure, specifically the West African savannah buffalo. Just a quick reminder what an extraordinary place Texas is. This is a video 
radio brochure for hunting on the Cherokee Ranch with all, and I mean all, these animals on offer. And to bring us back to Earth, thanks to viewer Mark Corney for sending in this film made by Orvis, showing one American's lifetime love of bird shooting. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's nearly it for this week, except to say our share sale has taken a step up. If you go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares, you can click on from there to have a peer around inside our company and see if you'd like to become an angel. Well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to fieldsportschannel.tv. Anyway, click to like us on Facebook and on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube or best of all pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain is out 7pm UK time every Wednesday and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. <laughs>